absolutely one time that I would kill for a postponement, the judge moves the trial date up. Now, I don't know. I just don't know if I can be ready by next week. I mean, on top of all this work, I've got that fundraiser and that radio interview. And the Bar Association dinner Saturday night. No, that's next Saturday. It's not? It... No, it's not. And, Marion, how did this happen? I've also got a meeting with the ladies' auxiliary. I don't want to jeopardize their vote. I mean, there's so darn many of them. But that uh, advisory dinner, that always gets an awful lot of press coverage, you know? Marion, how could I think that I could run for Senate and still be district attorney at the same time, huh? You didn't forget that you have a press conference in half an hour, did you? No, I didn't. But they're going to ask me about that new rezoning plan, and I haven't even had time to look at it. I just know the press is going to ask me a lot of questions about it. That reminds me, coming to work this morning, a cop pulls me over for a registration check. I do not have my driver's license with me. Then the cop recognizes me and refuses to issue me a, a, a traffic ticket. And I can't have that. So there I am sitting there for the first time in my life, absolutely begging this police officer, please give me a traffic ticket. Eventually he did, but I can't have Leo Flynn's people thinking I used my influence to get out from under a... So would you please call the good folks at the Department of Motor Vehicles, have them issue me a, a duplicate driver's license just as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Where the heck did I leave my driver's license? Well, honey, I didn't know you were still home. Oh, yeah, since I, I slept late, I just decided to work at home. What are you doing here? Well, I didn't get to sleep till, what, 8 a.m. because of the big blackout. Uh, uh, did you sleep late? Aren't you feeling well? Oh, no, I... It was just the heat. I just kind of tossed and turned all night. Uh, well, the cleaning lady called in sick. So let me help you straighten up. Oh. Oh, I don't have time for this. What am I doing? Let's just... Oh, what's that? Oh, um, uh, that's my driver's license. Why do you have it in your bed? Oh, I guess it fell out of my purse. I'm so careless. Honey, do me a favor and load the dishwasher. I've got to get to work. Oh, yeah. The place is going to be a madhouse between the blackout and the Cambrai story. Oh, what's going on with that? Well, I put Jilly on it. Nick's not coming in with Mindy disappearing like that. Wow, any word on her? Not as far as I know. It's just the strangest thing. Yeah. Anyway, I'm really understaffed on the political desk. Now, who am I going to get to handle Ross's press conference? Ross has a press conference today? Yeah, it's the biggest one since he announced he's running. Well, I could do it. You? You're not a reporter. Yes, but I've had plenty of experience supervising press conferences for Spalding. I know how to ask tough questions. Yeah, that's what worries me. I know Ross is not your favorite person. I wouldn't want you to be too hard on him. I'll be nice, I promise. Can I do it? Sure. Why not? Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. I called the DMV and they're processing a new driver's license for you. Thank you very much, Marion. I just don't know if I'm ready for this press conference. Oh, you'll do fine. You're always so organized. That's why I'm surprised that you misplaced your driver's license. So unlike you. I know that. It's very unlike me. But for the life of me, I cannot remember what... Oh, please. Not there. What? And nothing. I just had a thought. That... That's all for now, Mary. Thank you. Come on, Blake. Pick up. The reporters are here. Wonderful. Marion, tell me something. Why did I schedule a press conference for today? Do you want me to cancel? Uh, Ross Marler shuns the press is not the headline I wish to see as a tie screen. Yep. Right. No, just give me uh, five or ten seconds and then send them in. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hey, Elaine, new hairstyle. Very becoming. Good Chuck, start. good to see you. Kevin, how you doing? Uh, we all squeeze into this little uh, office that the state has given me. Well, then, shall we begin? How do you respond to Senator Flynn's claim you don't have the experience to do what he's done in Washington? <laughs> 
Well, considering the few months that Leo Flynn has been there and considering the few things that Leo Flynn has done, I respectfully disagree with my honorable opponent. That's a... <laughs> yes, Kevin. Uh, what's your position on the new rezoning plan? Well, to be honest with you, I don't have a position. Well, mm. are, are, are you saying you, you don't know? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that I am not going to take a position on this plan until I am assured that the plan, or any plan for that matter, is going to benefit the citizens of this state and not a bunch of lobbyists in Washington. Huh? Are there any other questions? Yes. Tell us, Mr. Marler, what did you do the night of the blackout? Well, I am happy to say that all the city agencies, police, fire, medical emergencies, they were all doing their jobs in a timely fashion. I'd also like to take this opportunity... You're not answering the question, Mr. Marler. Where were you? Are you hiding something? Well, no, no, of course I'm not hiding anything. I was with my constituents doing what I could. Doing what? Believe me, I was doing all I could. Well, you know, I, I covered that story all night. I don't remember seeing you. I saw him. The next morning. He was exhausted. He was probably doing what he said he was doing. Helping his constituents. Well, there you have it. Should we move on? Sir. Yes. Perhaps in the future, it would be wise to have someone on top of you. That is a staff person, perhaps, with you night and day, just to help us press people. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you. Good to see you. And Chuck, you take care. <laughs> thank you. Good to see you. Kevin, yeah. see you. Behave Hi. yourself. All right. See you at the next one. Ms. Thorpe. Yes, Mr. Marler. There is a point that I'd like to clarify with you. Why did you do that? Do what? You purposely and pointedly asked me a question about what I was doing the night of the blackout. Why did you do that? I didn't hear from you all day. Just wanted to see if you still cared. Like we agreed that what happened was beautiful unexpected and a one-time thing. A girl can change her mind, can't she? Blake, please. No, 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 no. What are you doing? You forgot something. Give it a rest, Mom, all right? Like, let me get you a seat. No, Frank, don't worry about it. It's okay. No one can get to me this evening. So who's the guy? What? Well, when you look the way you look, I figure there has to be a guy involved. Oh. How exactly do I look? <laughs> well, I think you look great. Have I told you how much I love you, Frank? Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. You like that type. I heard she was seeing him. No, no, she's not. That's not true. Hmm? I mean, I heard Blake and uh, Holly talking about it just the other day. Yeah, it must be true. 
Besides, I heard that Senator Flynn is quite the lady killer. Yeah. Yeah, well, they will make a great couple then. Blake is no saint, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but then again, your private life is squeaky clean, Ross. You should have no problem getting elected. Thank you, Nadine. I hope that comes true, yes. But my first priority right now is to put Jenna Bradshaw right where she belongs. Yes. So, well, what's the latest results of the poll at WSBR? Am I still in the lead? Mm -hmm. It's very close, neck and neck. Yesterday you were head, today Ross is. Huh. Where, where does he get his support from? Women. Really? Huh. Well, it's the husband's vote that I'm after, anyway. <laughs> Well, you know, I wouldn't dismiss the wives so quickly. Some of them have their own corporations, and the rest are pretty good at talking their husbands around. Hmm. You're probably right. You know, you're probably right about a lot of things, especially when it comes to PR. You know, why don't you reconsider and, and come work for my re-election campaign in, in Washington? <laughs> I'm very busy at WSPR, and as you know, being a station employee, I can't officially support either candidate. Oh. But thank you for your vote of confidence. Excuse me, I have to go make a phone call. Well, well, Mahler. I've got a question for you. Goody. Oh, excuse me. Ross? Yes. I've got a phone call for you. Thank you, Ham. Sure. Hey, Ross. <clears throat> Ross Marler here. Hello. I've noticed you can't keep your eyes off me this evening. I've got the same problem. You're looking incredibly sexy this evening. Well, I will uh, definitely get back to you on this. Excuse me, gentlemen. I caught your press conference earlier today. It was very impressive. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, there seemed to be a fair amount of focus on your activities during the blackout. <coughs> well, it was quite an evening for everybody. It sure was. And where were you, exactly? Various places. I just wanted to be where I could be of the most help. I think that's an appropriately vague answer befitting a politician, don't you think so? <laughs> <laughs> Dad's just a very suspicious guy who doesn't believe anything he sees on TV. Come on, Dad. Uh, Roger, I hear that you have great plans for that waterfront property you recently acquired. Uh, right. How would you know about my plans? As DA, I tend to hear about such things. It's going to be a tough time getting it resumed. It's not going to happen before November, and after that, it's anybody's guess. agenda is twofold. First of all, as I said, gotta get that land resolved fast. Roger, I got everybody I know working on it. It's just gonna take some time. I mean, there's a lot of bureaucratic red tape, and uh, we have to go through proper channels. Otherwise, the process will have to start all over again. I just can't guarantee that by this November, that we'll pass that bill through the Senate. You're gonna have to get yourself re-elected, aren't you? Well, with your help, I will. Which brings me to the matter of campaign contributions. Now, obviously, I'm prohibited from uh, contributing directly, but I have ideas on tapping into some very deep pockets. You happen to have a fair amount of constituents who will benefit greatly by my construction plans once we're rezoned. First of all, I want to set up a meeting between you and Fred Cartwright. Cartwright Construction? He's, uh, no easy touch. No, and he has some grievances about your tenure, but I think he's approachable, especially once he realizes that there's a multi-million dollar contract awaiting him after the election. All right, I'll meet him. Okay, in the meantime, of course, you can expect major contributions from the mechanic who fixes my car, my cleaning lady, and my third grade teacher who's in a nursing home on 7th Street. <laughs> it's always a pleasure doing business with you, Roger. Same here, Liam. Then you too, Blake. You too, Leo. I can call you Leo, can't I? Absolutely. Oh. Forgive me, Roger. Your daughter 
is absolutely irresistible. Hey, what happened to the party? Hi. Well, uh, Mom went home, and I think Ross is out back getting some air. Oh. Like, listen, I'm sorry about my mom's mouth. Oh, please. She doesn't bother me. Well, can I give you a lift home? Uh, no, I actually think I'm going to stick around for a while. Well, um, you definitely look great. So are they right here? Are you seeing somebody? Mm, huh? Maybe yes, maybe no. Jealous? <laughs> maybe a little, maybe a little. <laughs> So, what's, what's going on? Something going on, isn't it? Good night, Frank. Blake. <laughs> Honey, we've got to go. Oh. Well, I'd be delighted to give you a ride home. Oh, thank you, but uh, I've already promised someone else. Uh, lucky fellow. <laughs> Listen, honey, I'd like you to give some uh, thought to a story idea I have for WSPR, sort of a magazine concept, tracking where people were during the blackout. Sounds intriguing. Oh, I think we'd have a lot of fun with it. It'd be, you know, a very human interest sort of thing. Focusing on the regular guy in the street. Maybe throw in a VIP or two. Who? Oh. Well, Marler comes to mind. Actually, you gave me the idea in your question to him in the press conference. He was very vague about his answer, and I think inquiring minds would be very interested to find out where he was that night. Hmm. Well, good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, night sweetie. Go right. Good night. Are you going home soon? Hello. I could use a lift. Oh, um, I don't think I can do that. Though. I'm going to be staying for a little while, I think. Well, I just got some interesting news from Leo Flynn about his campaign plans. Oh. I think, though, that talking politics is not the only thing you want to do. It may not be such a good idea, Blake. Too bad. You don't know what you're missing. But then again, you do, don't you? So, how are you doing on that little assignment I gave you? Finding out what Ross is doing during the blackout. Oh, that. Uh, I, I didn't think that was very high priority. Well, it is. I want you to get a real serious about it right now. Really, Dad? Because, I mean, honestly, there are just so many things that I really need to be doing right now. What? That's what I'd like to know. What are you up to? Why are you resisting me on this? Look, I want to look at that uh, videotape of Leo Flynn's last interview, and I appreciate you letting yes, me Yes, fine, anytime. Look, I've got to talk to you about this. Okay, but I don't have that much time. I want you to know I did not realize it until just now, but I, I am furious. Really? About what? Blake! Blake had no right to do what she did to you. Holly, I am so sorry. Why should you be sorry? I was the one who got involved. Oh, Ross, it is so like you to shoulder the blame. The blame rests entirely with Blake and me. You? I sent her to you. What? I practically invited her to do what she did. Holly. I mean, I was just thinking out loud how shorthanded I was that I had no one to cover your press conference. <laughs> but I didn't stop to think of the pitfalls when she offered to do it. I should have. You know, I, I just caught the beginning of the tape and I could strangle her for what she tried to do to you. I think that I handled it okay. Oh, you were brilliant. That's not the point. The point is the press has got to be objective. I know Blake is not a reporter, but she knows better than that. Besides, if we're going to be slanted in any way, it should be pro Marler. Yeah. Perhaps it would be uh, better if Blake didn't cover my campaign. I agree. I'm going to pull her off you once and for all. I'm just saying I don't think there's any dirt on Ross. But you know that for a fact. You have proof. 
N no. Why? Do you have proof of something? No, that's what I'm looking for. That's what this conversation is about. Honey, he has got to be hiding something. You know how smooth he was during that press conference? Uh, maybe he was smooth because there's nothing to hide. But maybe there was. Look, you're the PR whiz. You know that sometimes the most pat answers cover up the muddiest problems. What? You suddenly think Marler is some kind of saint? Hardly. I just think that he's a good enough politician to know how to cover his back. Oh, I get it. Oh, this has something to do with your feelings about him. My what? No, I mean, it's just that you obviously dislike the guy so much, you just don't want to have anything to do with him. That's it, isn't it? Oh, I've never been able to hide anything from you, Dad. <laughs> and Ross knows how I feel about Honey, him. Honey, that's all right. I understand, but this can work to our advantage. You just follow his campaign. You stick to him real close. I know you'll come up with something we can use against him. Uh, I suppose is possible it's critical to me that we nail him okay i'll do it <laughs> that's my girl we're gonna make a great team <sighs> Thanks. you're so sad about heart he's got to come back honey he's got to but in the meantime if anybody can get to ross it's you Do it for me, baby. What's it for? For well, good luck in the campaign. I'm rooting for you all the way. Well, thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, dude. Oh, William. What are you doing here so late? Well, I stayed to get that tape on Cambrai ready for you. Great. I can't wait to see it. Oh, oh Nick and I. Oh. Well, I'll go queue it up. All right, great. Holly, I'm, I'm glad you're still here. Um, David's hearing is tomorrow, and I was hoping oh, that... Oh, you I... want to be there with him? Of course. Take the day off. Thank you. Good. Ross, I don't mean to ask your office for preferential treatment. <coughs> Look, I know that you were very worried about your brother, but it's not even my case, Julie. It's Jim Haggerty's. But he reports to you. Maybe you could talk no. to him. I'm sorry. We can't work things that way. I understand. Julie, it's even out of Jim Haggerty's hands. I mean, uh, his admission of guilt is public record. Tomorrow is just sentencing. David's future is in the hands of Judge Conner. Oh, but she's very fair. Yeah, she, she really is. So don't worry about it. All David should do is just behave himself. That's his best bet. Okay. I'm glad we came to terms about Blake. I would hate to have her cause problems between us. So anyway, have good luck with your campaign meeting tomorrow. Let me know what happens. Yeah, with my new lapel pin, it should go swimmingly. <laughs> Don't move or my hands could slip. I've been told to put the squeeze on you, Ross. And I figured there's no time like the present. Blake, we have got to stop playing this game. Okay, now who was it? Who asked you to put the squeeze on me? Guess and you'll win a prize. Blake. Dad, he saw a tape of your press conference, and he thinks you lied about where you were the night of the blackout. Oh, Ross, it's the perfect cover. Dad told me to stay on top of you until I get the naked truth. I'm game if you are. Okay, now, Blake, we have got <laughs> to stop this, all right? I know you're right. It's not very private out here. Let's go in Mom's office. Are you crazy? <laughs> crazy for you, Senator. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you this just one more time. What we did... It was nice. Nice? I don't think so. But it has to move. Mm, I love your shoulders. Are you listening to me at all? I'm just trying to prepare you for life in Washington. You have to be prepared to keep your constituents happy. Look, Blake, this is totally out of hand. Now, you cut it out. Or what? You'll tell my mother. Oh, all right. That's enough. <laughs> Long enough. I want you to stop harassing Ross. 
Is that what you think I was doing? Well, what would you call it? Well, actually, to tell you the truth... Blake. Oh, it's all right. I can handle Blake. I'm glad you think so. I'm sure there will be other press conferences. Yes. Well, I'm going to let the two of you sort it out. Excuse me? Yep, I'm going to. Not so fast. For the record, you will no longer be covering Ross's press conferences. Why? I saw what you tried to do to him on the tape. Oh, Mother. You're imagining things. Why would I want to sabotage Ross's campaign? I don't know, Blake. But you're not going to get the chance to do it anymore. Maybe, maybe not. Dad might want me to still cover him. Tough. It's not just my decision. Ross doesn't want you either. What? That's right. He told me so tonight. Ross, wait. Holly, come on, it's been a long day. I gotta get. And this will just take a second. I, I took care of the Blake problem, but there is something else. Roger wants to expand the station. He has suddenly reacquired the land he needs to do it. Yeah, I heard about that. How? He says Alexander sold it to him. Now he is willing to lease it to the station for a mere pittance. Now, without the land cost factor, we can't afford to expand. The question is, is this a good deal, or is he setting me up? Look, Holly, I don't know what Roger's motives are, but the idea of WSPR expanding on that particular piece of land, that's a pipe dream. Why? Because it's waterfront land, so is the land surrounding it. It is protected by the Wetlands Commission. And it can't be rezoned? Mm -mm. He can't do what he's saying? No. Not so long as I'm elected senator, he can't. Such grandstanding. And from a man who hasn't been elected senator yet. No, Roger, but I'm going to be, despite whatever mud you fling my way. And speaking of dirt, Holly, I think you should look into how he reacquired this land from Alexander. I bet there's a Pulitzer in that story. I'm looking for Chile. You really don't want me working on your campaign anymore. Plank, don't you think it would be better? Ross, what are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. That's good to hear. Mm. Oh, Holly, Ross is looking for you. I just saw him step in your office. Holly, uh, I know you're busy, but I'm going to need you to take a look at the Posner interview before the end of the day. I thought that was ready to air. Well, there's a few more questions I need to fill out. Okay. So. Here? Ooh, I like that. What? Not here is a lot more promising than never again. Blake, haven't we been through this? I mean, I thought we had an agreement. Um, we did? I forgot. Tell me again. It has to be over. Oh, dear. I thought we were having so much fun. No, 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 no. You're playing games with me, and I don't like that. You're wrong on both counts. I'm not playing games with you, and you do like it. Come on, Ross, tell the truth. You've been such a good boy for so long. Isn't there something about living on the edge that really gets your juices going? Why are you doing this to me? I just saw you standing there with this solemn look on your face, and I just had to kiss you, that's all. An uncontrollable impulse. You know about those, don't you? You are absolutely incorrigible. Thank you. Oh, Ross, you promised Julie an in-depth interview. Can I confirm that? Yes, yes, I did. I'm fine. She's probably more ideal for that than I am. I might not be objective enough, and Tevin knows you wouldn't be. Okay? Yes. Hello, oh, Senator. Who have you been kissing? <laughs> Let me help you with that. Ross has been kissing babies. Maybe a few babes, too, hmm? Price you pay for running for office, you know. Well, excuse me, I have things to do. What exactly does Blake do around here? Public relations. And she's Roger's right hand. Why? I don't know. I, she just keeps popping up night and day wherever I go. 
Ross, what's going on with you two? What do you mean? Tension was so thick when I came into the room. Oh, that, yeah. Well, uh, we had words about your decision to take her off my campaign. Yeah, right. This has to stop. I am right in the middle of campaigning for a seat in the United States Senate. And you are Holly's daughter. You saw how clever I am at getting out of tight spots. You should watch me. It's a real asset for a politician. You know, we could get away with doing it again. I'm sorry. I wish I knew how we got started on these things. Probably all my fault, right? I just push all the wrong buttons. Well, I hereby swear never to mention Alan Michael's name again. Sure. I mean it. Let me make it up to you. Take you out to dinner. <laughs> All right. Just let me call and cancel my plans for tonight. Oh, you've got something going on? So who is it? When do I get to meet him? Soon. Good. Uh, yes, I'd like to leave a message for Mr. Marler. Lindsay, sure. Okay, um, when she gets here, could you make sure that she gets this? It's very, very important. She'll get it. Thank you, you're a dear. You're welcome. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, I love babies more than anybody, but when you're confronted with the entire nursery of St. Luke's Hospital, class of 2010... Oh, and they expected you to kiss all of them? Oh, yes. <laughs> Each and every little cherubic face. So, after 20 minutes, I was all puckered out. <laughs> <laughs> you have such a strong jaw. Hey, excuse me, Ross. you mind if I uh, talk to my wife for a moment? No, <clears throat> of course not. Uh, really? Besides, I have a limousine waiting for me to whisk me away to home. Good evening. Nadine. Driver, home sweet home, please. It's the wrong way. He's going the wrong way. Driver, you're going the wrong way. Want to bet? Blake. Blake, I hesitate to ask you this, but what do you think you're doing? I'm kidnapping you. Of course. I never should have asked. Oh, just back and relax, Ross. Where's the real driver? You're looking at her. I rented this baby. Why? <laughs> you didn't figure on the Rotary Club springing for this limo, did you? I mean, I know they're supporting you and everything, Wait, but... Why did you rent the limo? There's a full bar to CD player in the back. We cannot be seen together this way. Which way? As driver and passenger? This is so nuts. The windows are tinted. No one's going to see us. No, no, Blake. We've talked about that. Talk is cheap. No, what, what, what I mean is the, the, uh, what we, what we have, what we've had, that wasn't an affair. It was an incident. Oh, I've never really heard it called that before. But it was certainly wonderful for me. And I didn't hear you complaining. No, no, I liked it as much as you did. But uh, I am a candidate for the United States Senate. And I'm, I'm trying to project this certain image here. And if the press starts poking around in my personal life... They'd find a very sexual, very loving man. There's no disgrace in that. Oh, I guess not. But you and I, aren't we a total mismatch? Oh, Ross, it's so frustrating listening to you sometimes. Who wants to hear about the public and images? I want you to talk to me the way you did when we made love. Blake. Oh, Ross, you've been without a woman for 
car too long. Just relax. Take your jacket off. Kick off your shoes. Loosen that tie. Give me a head start. Where are we going? On the ride of your life. Fried chicken, there's just nothing like it. Mm, the best. Mm. Have some more champagne. No, thank you. That's it for me. Mm. I have an early day tomorrow. Then we better not waste any time. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. The picnic was lovely. Food was good, the company was great, I just have to go. Well, I have a very special dessert. No. I couldn't eat another thing. No, oh, I'm not telling you. Oh, dear. I think you'd better take me home now. Oh, come on, Ross. We're miles from town. Nobody saw us. There's nobody around. Who would know? We would. But we already know. And tomorrow you'll have that Marler spring back in your step, and your public will love you. I'll be damned. I think there's a certain logic to what you say. Stop trying to analyze everything. Stop thinking. Just feel. We have the means, the motive, the opportunity. It's the perfect crime. being built for comfort. <laughs> Didn't I tell you you'd learn something tonight? Yes, you did. And boy, did you keep that promise. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Blank. It was a new experience for me. Oh, baby, the best is yet to come. Mm. Mm. steal this limousine. Uh, assault. With intent to do bodily pleasure. Again. You don't have to look that one up in the book. Oh, we can write a whole new at me and off the top of your head do you think uh, this is a compromising position for someone aspiring to the Senate? I won't tell and you'd find us out here in the middle of nowhere <laughs> oh no. No, 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 no 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 you were saying that a few minutes ago a few minutes ago I wasn't quite so tired mm. And maybe we should do it again. Blake, I thought we agreed that we were going to do it just once. Which time? I don't know. You didn't like it? I liked it too much. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yes. I liked it. It takes the right man. And believe me, the good ones are scarce. They're either involved or married. It's the single woman's lament. 
Come on, I venture to say you could have your choice of a gentleman. Right. You still haven't gotten over Alan Monk on Sure. I mean, it's, it just takes a while to completely forget, you know. Yeah, but I'm sure someone someday's gonna come along and will make you forget. Like, you know, it is uh, one thing for us to be together once. Or maybe twice. Oh, he's weakening. Blake? Don't talk. People want the senator to be a man of action. I'm one of those people. You would have a lock on the women's <laughs> Don't you ever stop working? Yeah. Didn't you notice? Yes. You you were about to say that I was melting or glowing or words to that effect? You are. Were you wild in your youth or is this some um, untapped reservoir of passion. Tapped? I haven't been tapped like this in years. Vanity prevents me from telling you how many years, but I don't know what this is, Blake, but uh, maybe it's the heightened sense of danger, the danger of getting caught. Maybe we're just good together. I liked it too much. Too much. And it is dangerous, Blake. It's very easy to lose all sense of perspective. We must be sensible. Behind the tinted glass and at a secluded beach, that's one thing. But out there, the world is waiting. It just won't. when I was talking about your smile. I meant to tell you that I've always found you attractive. Oh. But when you let your guard down and you just look at me, you are breathtakingly beautiful. On top of that, you're intelligent. Funny, very funny. And sexy. One more good boy wants. <laughs> exactly. And someday some young fellow will come along. And he'll be able to give you more than this. I guess you're right. Out. No, 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 I could be seen. 
I, uh, don't worry about it. I mean, if the tabloids get a hold of this, it's not a reporter. Can you be so sure you sound as if you know who it is? I do. Who? Madonna or somebody? In your dreams. Oh, it's just teenagers. Okay. I've taken enough chances for tonight. How'd you know who it was? The, the kids at the station talk about it sometimes. Big makeout spot. You remember that, don't you? I am not that old, thank you. Okay, boy. This has to be the last time. I mean, you know, for pretty much a long while. That was diplomatically vague. Uh, I'm sorry I scared you. I'm sorry I panicked. At least it wasn't someone we knew. Yeah. Until next time. <laughs> for hours my car broke down i couldn't reach you oh so you invited dad over hey she was stuck in the garage i was waiting for the tow truck for over an hour oh. and then your father showed up i i feel really terrible about this what you we could have dinner tomorrow night no no it's fine it was just kind of going to be a surprise it's not your mother's fault you seem so um uh, are you with your new boyfriend tonight well that was the surprise. Well, I can't hide anything from you, Mother. You're just too smart. I told you. We were having this very discussion. I told him there was somebody new in your life. Alan Michael is ancient history. What can I say? So when do we get to meet him? I can't wait. Me either. Soon. I told you, anything you've got going, end it. It's it's not serious. It's just an old score I'm setting. We don't have time for games. You're supposed to be investigating Ross for me in your spare time. You any closer to getting anything on him? Uh, yeah, you could say that. T, you'll be ready in a minute. So, when is your young man coming over for dinner? Oh, I think I want that to be a surprise. <laughs> you asked for? Very fast. Aim to please. Excuse me, Holly, but I just talked to the DA's office and Ross mm -hmm. is meeting with Chief Ryan at the police station later this afternoon. Yeah. I think we should cover it. Cover it? Why? Well, it's a perfect setting to get his views on law and order. Very good. So who do we have on short notice? I think I could do it. All right. I'll do it. You're busy. Thanks, Blake, but the political desk is my beat. Well, I've covered Ross before. Yes, and it nearly caused a fiasco. All I asked is what he was doing the night of the blackout. What's wrong with that? You just have this way of rubbing him the wrong way. I don't know. Not always. Often enough. Jilly, you handle it. You look perfect. Oh. <laughs> I was just... Uh, Preparing yourself for your constituents. Indeed. But uh, one cannot be too perfect or uh, too prepared for the constituents of this fair state. Oh, spoken like a true candidate. Oh, ouch, you caught me. That was a perfectly plastic political platitude, wasn't it? <laughs> now, see, that's the sense of humor I want our viewers to see in this interview. The real Ross Mahler. <laughs> the real Ross Mahler. Well, I think people want their candidates to be uh, thoughtful, not flippant. Say, by the way... Uh, is WSPR sending anybody else over to cover this? Well, Blake did volunteer. But she's not coming, is she? After the last press conference, Holly figured you probably had enough of her for a while. Yeah. That's for sure. So, shall we do it? Do it. 
full of the interview. Yes, of course. Ross, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Chill out. Why don't we do this interview uh, somewhere over there? All right, I'll go set up. So what we need are solid, long-term solutions to the core problems of crime. Poverty, lack of education. Now, these issues, in my opinion, have not adequately been dealt with by Senator Flynn. Well, it's obvious that you care very much about justice, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, yes, I intend to make it a priority, along with education, because uh, nothing less than the future of this nation depends on our citizens being well-educated. And I agree. Well, it sounds like you're going to have a very busy schedule if you go to Washington. If I'm elected senator, my time will be devoted to working for the people of this state. Well, surely not all your time. I mean, even a senator has to have a personal life. Oh, yes, I agree, and I, I imagine I will find time to relax. With anyone special? No, I'm afraid not at the moment. You know, as long as we're here in the police station, I'd like to but talk Mr. about... Mr. Marler, won't you need a hostess to, you know, serve at those dinners that I'm sure you're likely to give in, in Washington? Well, I guess I'll have to hire a caterer or something. Now, about the Citizens Review Board that I wanted to... Mr. Talk. District Attorney, I sense that you're hesitant to talk about your personal life. You're not trying to hide anything, are you? No, no, no. Of course not. Okay. My personal life is an open but dull book because I'm afraid at the moment most of the pages are blank. A handsome, unattached <laughs> bachelor like you? Come on. <laughs> I'm flattered, but do you think this is uh, really relevant to the campaign? Well, it might be to some of your constituents. Well, they can show their support for me in November by voting for me. Don't get snappy. I was just asking a question. So did I. Well, you guys are cousins now. I just wondered how you were getting along. Why does it interest you? Nick, if I knew this would upset you so much, I wouldn't have asked. But you did. You know, it's funny that you'd even care considering how Alan Michael treated you. Well, I don't like to dwell on the past. As a matter of fact, I feel sorry for him. I mean, you being Alex's son has really hurt him. And why is that? As if you don't know. Tell me, Blake, why do you care so much? I'm just curious. Oh, curiosity. Now, that's a major trait of yours. I remember the first time I met you over at the gazebo. You were very curious back then, too. Wow, that was a while ago. I'm flattered I made such an impression. Mm. You know what I remember most about that encounter? How you were pumping me for information about Alan Michael. You were curious about me and the Spaldings even back then. Was I? Yeah. Oh, I guess it was a curiosity thing. So tell me, is this just curiosity, or are you trying to find something out for somebody else? I'm Alan Michael's ex-wife. I just want to know how he's doing. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you ask him yourself? Oh, hey, Nick. How you doing? How you doing? Good, good. Yeah. Blake, listen, I need to talk to you about something. Sure. Uh, Spalding's uh, having this press conference, and she wants to... Uh, and Alex, she wants the, the station covered. Of course. Covered. Yeah. All right. Um, if you'll excuse me. Mm -hmm. Since when are you guys such good buds? It doesn't hurt to be friendly. With a guy that could ruin your chances of running Spalding? Well, Nick says that he's not interested in the corporate fast track. And do you believe him? Let's just say that I'm going to make sure that he stays off of that. Mm, and you want me to help you? Well, we always were a good team, right? So what's the plan? Well, Nick's decided to, uh, to take a seat on the Spalding board. He says he just wants to sit in as a reporter. Could be dicey. Mm -hmm, exactly. I mean, I wouldn't want anything written about Spalding that might hurt them. No, if he overstepped his bounds, that could upset some of the board members. Precisely. Which wouldn't do too much for his chances if he did decide to get involved with the company later on. So, maybe you want to jump on the story so that you could smooth things out? That would really make you look good, wouldn't it? I'm glad you understand. So, are you going to keep an eye out for any uh, new stories that McKinnon might write about Spall? Why should I? forever, are you? I mean, there was a time when we did look out for her. You have Eleni to do that for you now. What do you really need? I would just hate for Holly and Roger to have to go through some kind of a lawsuit, you know? What are you saying? Look, Nick fashions himself as some kind of a rogue reporter. It is possible that he may write something about Spalding that we may consider as liableness. You're in PR. It's your job to prevent that. So why don't you just slide those stories to me? You're the only one benefiting from this. What do I get? 
I'll make sure WSPR gets uh, certain news items before the rest of the press. So you get a jump on Nick's exposés and I get a jump on the news. Yeah, everybody's happy. Not to mention, I'd be very great. I've had a taste of your gratitude. I think I'll pass. Oh, come on, Blake. You're honestly going to work for Mommy and Daddy your whole life. Are you offering me a job? You never know. Really? Yeah. Do you have your wife's permission? Well... I didn't think so. I'm sorry, Mr. Marlowe. We had to pick him up for drunk and disorderly. You know, don't you, that Eric Levonicek is related to the Spaldings? No, sir. I didn't know that. Yeah. And they're rather influential in this town? Well, rich or poor, they break the law, they get arrested, sir. Well, sometimes the Spaldings think that they're above the law. So make sure your paperwork is done correctly. It'll save a lot of trouble for all of us. Yes, sir. So, Julie, are we uh, done with the interview? Okay. Yes, and thank you. I need to get back to the nightly news. Okay, I'll walk out with you. Right. Poor Nick. Hey, uh, one day he finds out his biological father is Eric, and the next day he's bailing him out of trouble. Well, with Eric Luvanichuk for a father, this may not be the last time he posts bail. better for you to look at. You know what I'm really good at? Mm -hmm. Besides that. Breaking into people's houses? Food. Oh. I'm a really good cook. Oh. Are you hungry? campaign trail can be all that fast food and with no woman in your life it must be awful for you so i've made us some comfort food some mashed potatoes some meatloaf blake oh i know but it's not just any meatloaf this blake, meatloaf is perhaps you didn't understand i said get out please before we have dinner and everything. Right now. Careful, someone might see us. Like, please, could we stop this? What are you going to do? Call the cops? 
have me arrested, I'll enter a plea bargain. Blake, you have to listen to me. No. I am not going to listen to a man with an empty stomach. Eat and then we'll talk. No means no. It's true for women and it's true for men. Sometimes a man really does mean no. And this is one of those times? Oh, yes, it is. Well, you said no at the beach and you seemed pretty adamant. And then weren't you glad I changed your mind for you? At that time and in that particular place, yes, I did change my mind. It was enjoyable. Enjoyable? All right. It was <clears throat> a lot of fun. It was exhilarating. It was very exciting. But, Blake, we had this agreement. It was going to happen just that once. <clears throat> That was the second time. Well, you know, but that's okay. That's okay. I have done things just this once a million times. <laughs> I wouldn't brag about that. Okay, if that's how you want to play it, we'll say just this once again. It's the best way around a faint heart. No, we are going to say good night. That's what we're going to say. You don't want to say good night. But you're being careful. You know, this being careful has cost you a lot of fun in your life. Oh, I've had my share of fun. It doesn't show. But anyone can change. It's easy to be brave, one night at a time. You're here. I'm here with you. Don't lose your nerve now. Blake, we're playing with fire. We cannot be seen together. I mean, how would you have explained your presence here tonight if I brought someone home? Who? Let's say someone from my campaign staff. I'm starting a private catering service. You don't care if we get caught, do you? Not much. In fact, I'm kind of proud of us. Do you like corn? Yes, I like corn. <clears throat> Blake... I readily admit that I have enjoyed a lot our adventures together, but uh, you said earlier that you were proud of us. And that can't be. There is no us. It's just not then in the cards. Then who was that on the floor of the limo the other night? The, our stand-ins? The limo. That was like a vacation from real life. But that wasn't us. That's not who we really are. It was... A time out of time. Exactly. And it was delightful, but it was not you, and it wasn't me. No? I was there. Did you send a substitute that day? Or the last time? Was it like Miles Standish coming in for someone else? Does that make me Evangeline or Pocahontas? I guess I really don't know the story. I need you to take this seriously. I'm taking this as seriously as I should. Lately, we've had a lot of close calls. <laughs> I know, they were exciting, weren't they? <laughs> you may not care if somebody finds out about us, but I do very much. I noticed. You know how much this campaign means to me? It's a culmination. Years of service to this community, and now I have a chance to make a mark on the national scene. Then do it with style. Blake, I can't afford to be linked with anyone right now. I'm not looking to you for true love. I know. I mean, I've had a laugh out of this too, you know. I appreciate that. But we, we have a good time together, and you've been linked with my mother and other women in the past. Yes. So, if it wasn't wrong then, why is it wrong now? Because... You're different. You are... Go ahead, finish it. What am I? There's just so many things in a campaign that are... artificial. You know, so many constraints. I couldn't afford to be involved with anyone. When I'm right in the middle of a campaign, it wouldn't be fair to the woman. It wouldn't be fair to the... It was different. Some girls like to hear that, but...
when you said it, it didn't really sound like a compliment. How did you mean it exactly? Different in a good way? Just or... different. It's hard to explain. Well, try. You've been pretty open with your opinions. You once called me an awful creature. Yes, because at that point, I thought that you were. Now, of course, I've changed my opinion. But you would be an awful creature, even now, to some people. I'd be awful. Well, unacceptable. They wouldn't be my kind of people anyway. Okay, that's fine for you, Blake. But me, I'm running for office and I need every warm body I can find to vote for me. You can attest to my warm body. Blake. Do you even know what you're talking about? Are you talking about yourself or the opinion of the public? Yes, I know what I'm talking about. All right, let's be blunt. You're very young, and yet you're twice divorced. You have slept with every spalding man that you've ever met, and on several occasions, you have come very close to going to jail. Oh, you, you've never been in trouble? No, I've been the victim of trouble, oh, and I've tried to lead my life Lord. without a hint of scandal. Now, let's face it, Blake, to the public, you are scandalous. The public? Yes, my constituents. We're both single, both consenting adults. I know that, but if we were linked, people would be jumping to all sorts of conclusions. You mean the voters? Yeah, the voters, and people who depend on me, people I respect. Like who? I cannot give you a list of names. But believe me, an affair with Roger Thorpe's daughter, who's half my age, someone I once babysat, I think that would upset a few of my supporters, and I need them, you see, to come to fundraisers, and if they found out that we were somehow together... I would interfere with your fundraising? Please, try to understand. I know I'm explaining this badly, and I'm fond of you, Blake, too much so, but this is simply... A matter of perception. No, 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 I understand. How could I miss it? You're ashamed of me. Uh, the candles are mine, the placemats are yours. I barely touch them, you know, you can have them washed. Blake. Um, I open a bottle of wine to let it breathe. If you have a cork or Blake. something, well, forget it. Nothing can breathe in this room. Blake, now, come on. you are getting upset over absolutely nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Oh, is that what this is? Well, let me tell you, Mr. Marlar, all my life men have let me down. That doesn't bother me. As a matter of fact, I expect it. Now, don't go tell but me I've that. But I've tried like to make man. something of myself, and I have. I am more than Roger Thorpe's daughter. I am more than Holly Lindsay's daughter. I am Blake Thorpe, and that is something, not nothing. And no man has ever had the nerve to be ashamed of being seen with me. Who said that? No, I have. I never said that, Blake. Now, look, I would love to show you off. I would love to parade around with you on my arm. But you see, it's the circumstances. The circumstances. They're just inappropriate. Oh, that's something I want in my gemstone. Blake Thorpe, inappropriate. I wish you wouldn't do this. I wish you would just... Just go? Isn't that what you want to say? See, I've done this so many times, I even know your line. No, that is not what I wanted to say. Well, here's something real inappropriate. 